Good evening, St. John and guests, and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. Amen. This just this year, to, this Wednesday, February 14, 2024. Let us stand for the call to worship at this time. It's on the inside first page of your program on this evening. And uh, I, I will meet, read the minister and where the, 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 the people and you read the people. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, people. Today we begin a spiritual j -j -j journey that will span for 40 days from Ash Wednesday until Holy Saturday before Re Resurrection Sunday. The opening hymn will be Lead Me to Calvary. We have to depend on, we don't have a musician tonight, so we have to depend on our skills, amen? King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brown. Lead me to Calvary. The chorus. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thine agony. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Second verse. Show me the tomb where thou was laid. Tenderly mourn and when angels in robes of light array, God did thee while thy slave chorus, lest I forget guessing I mean. Lest I forget thy agony. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Let me like Mary through the gloom. Come with a gift to thee. Show to me now the empty tomb. Lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Last and final verse. May I be willing, Lord, to bear. Daily my cross for thee, even thy cup of grief to share. Thou hast borne all for me, lest I forget guessing of me, lest I forget thine agony. Lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Amen. Reverend Darrell Vanderhoff will come now at this time with our prayer, our opening prayer. Good evening, St. John. Let us pray. O oh, merciful Father, the giver of life, 
one who desires not only the loss of sinners, but that we all shall come to repentance and be forgiven. God, our Father, we uh, come to you on this evening. No goodness of our own, but we come just to tell you thank you. Lord, you called us from dust of the earth, and you breathed the breath of life into us, Lord God, and you gave us life. And you said, Lord God, that we shall have it more abundantly. Lord, we thank you that you claimed us for Christ through the water of baptism. And we ask now, Lord, that you look upon us with compassion as we enter these 40 days. Dear Lord, we just pray that you would allow your, your bearing of these ashes, Lord God, to uh, not just only be a sign, Lord God, in our lives, but Lord God, that you would get the glory out of our lives as well. And then God, we ask that you would forgive us for our sins, keep us from evil, Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, in the kindness of your heart. Help us to not only walk right, but to live right and to do the things that you would have us to do. Help us to live a life that is pleasing in our sight. And God, if you do these things, we'll be so ever to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus Christ's name we do pray. And the people of God say amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Vander Horst. Minister Victor R R Rogers will come forward at this time with our litany for Lent. It's also found in your program on this evening. Amen. I will re read the um, bold and the congregation will read the light letters. Uh, litany for Lent. Lord, who throughout these 40 days? Lord, who throughout these 40 days for us did fast and pray? Teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay. As you did hunger and did thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and so to live by your most holy words, word. Okay. All together? Abide with us that when this life of suffering is past, an Easter of unending joys we may attain at last. Amen. Amen. May, may, may the Lord um, bless the reading as well as the hearing of his words. Amen. The Old Testament scripture on this, on the, on, on this evening comes from Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verses 6 through 12, and it will be by our own Deacon Wallace Brown. Mm -hmm. The book of Isaiah, the 58th uh, chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. It is not this, the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go, the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. It is not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that this cover him, and that thou hide not thyself, 
from thine own play. The rewards of godliness. Uh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou takest away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vainly. And if thou draw out thou, thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then thou, then they hunger, then thy hunger rise in the obscurity and thy darkness be in the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make the fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fall not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the path to dwell in verses 6 through 12 of Isaiah 58. May the Lord add, th th thank you, Deacon Brown. May the Lord add a special blessing to the reading as well as the hearing of those words. Our New Testament scripture on this, on this evening comes from Matthew, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 6, and then 16 through 18. And that will be uh, read to us by Deacon Lee R. Uh, Amen. Amen. Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, first through the six verses, and then the sixteenth through the eighteenth verses. Be careful not to do your acts of kindness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not, out, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by men. I'll tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Then we go through the 16th through the 18th verses. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put all on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, 
but only to your Father who is unseen. But your, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. God's word is blessed. We ask God blessing upon the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, the D -D 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 Deacon Corley. Um, our hymn of preparation before our speaker comes tonight is a hymn I'm not familiar with, so I'm going to have to ask somebody to help me. I, I see the words, but I don't know the, as you would say, I don't know the music of that. Uh, so somebody's going to have to help me with uh, Holy Ground. It's, it's on the program, but I don't know. I don't know the, uh, does anyone know this song, Holy Ground? You can call it say he knows the song, Holy Ground, so he's going to lead this for us, amen? No, I do my best. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray, Jesus, now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray, Jesus, now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Thank you very much, uh, Deacon Corley, for being our musician. Our speaker tonight, the preacher tonight, the message of Lent is certainly no stranger to us here at St. John. He is the Reverend Dr. Ozell Cheatham. And he's going to come forward at this time and deliver to us our Lent message on this evening. Hear ye him. Amen. I cannot get him to stop calling me doctor. I keep telling him that my sister was the doctor, but I don't know, one day maybe I'll stop trying to stop him. <laughs> it is good uh, to be, I'm so glad to be able to see so many of you out this evening to uh, stand before you uh, in your presence, in the presence of God, in this place, to hear a few words. Pastor Graham told us we should be up here no more than 15 to 18 minutes. And I'm going to try to do what he asked. Now, you must understand that when you ask a preacher to get up and talk, he might say quite a few things. So I want you all to pray with me. I went around to uh, a few of you, most of you really, to ask your prayers this evening, um, because for one thing, I, I never really did anything with Lent until I got here at St. John Baptist Church. Um, 
the churches that I've been affiliated with, only two, my home church in Birmingham, Alabama, a little church called First Baptist Church in Pratt City, a little community on the outskirts of Birmingham. We didn't do anything for Lent. When I was in Spartanburg uh, at Mount Moriah Baptist Church, we didn't do anything for Lent. And um, I don't remember doing anything for Lent when uh, uh, Pastor Counts was here. But here we are, and we're talking about Lent. So I had to go and start looking up stuff about Lent, okay? And these 40 days leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is called Lent. And there are a few things about Lent that um, some people really enjoy celebrating. I don't know as much about celebrating it, but here's what I do know. The Lenten season is about the reason for the suffering and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The reason for the suffering and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but if you had a, how many of you all had brothers and sisters when you were growing up? Okay, I'm going to ask a couple of questions here. Uh, how many of you got a whipping from your parents that should have been given to one of your brothers or your sisters? Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. Now, now, how many of you allowed your sisters or your brother to get a whipping for something that you did. Just me and, oh, three of us. <laughs> three of us. Well, here's the thing. When I allowed one of my siblings to get a whipping for something that I did, I had first had to go to them and apologize to them and say, I'm sorry. I should not have do done that. And then the hard one was to go to my father and tell him that he shouldn't have whipped them. He should have whipped me. And that was the hardest thing. Getting whipped for one of my brothers or sisters, that's, that, that wasn't too tough, okay? I was the oldest, and I kind of took that on myself. Okay, I kind of took that on myself. But when another one got a whipping in my place, that was hard for me to deal with. I, I, I was angry with myself because... Somebody suffered in my place. So, you all see with my father, and don't, don't, and, and don't get me wrong, I love my dad. It's crazy about my dad because my dad did all sorts of things with me. My, my dad, he took me hunting. My dad, he taught me things about working on automobiles. He taught me a little bit about carpentry. We, we had a house, an old house. I, sh I could show you a picture of it sometime. But the ceilings were really high, and me and my dad, we lowered the ceilings. Okay, So I really loved my dad. And my dad, today, if my dad was around today, and he had children today, he would probably be in jail because, I don't know, some of those cords over there, maybe 
electric cords. Now, some of you have seen these orange cords. I know <laughs> Reverend Wilson probably uses some of these orange cords to run saws or whatever it is he needs to do to do his carpentry work. But I got whipped by those things. And I know that he'd probably be in jail today if he did that. But here's the thing. The suffering that Jesus Christ took on for me does not compare. The Bible says that he died on a Roman cross. So I had to look up the Roman cross. And it says that the Roman cross is one of the most excruciating, one of the most excruciating, painful ways to die. It was not quick. It was not quick. It was a terrible way. You, it was a suffering kind of thing. We don't like to see people suffer when they're going through cancer and stuff. We, we don't like that. Uh, we have a hard time. I, I had a hard time going to children's hospital, just playing guitar and making kids laugh and everything. And let me tell you, you can get, you can get attracted to a child. You can start to love that child, even when that child is not yours. And then to go back up there and look for him, and they say, he didn't make it. Packed my guitar up and walked out. Because we don't like to see people suffer. And I can only imagine all the pain that Jesus went through. Before I go too far, I'm going to read a, a couple of scriptures here. In Romans, the third chapter, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we don't, we, we, we don't know, we don't know enough about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in order to come to the glory of God. We know that Jesus did it, but even though we try, even though we try, we don't succeed. Romans 6 chapter, 23rd verse, it says this, it says, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I'm going to talk to you a, a few minutes about the already and then the not yet. The already and the not yet. It's this Lenten season, it's about taking time to reflect on why we all needed such a harsh method of redemption. Well, it's given right there in Romans, the third chapter, 23rd verse. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So none of us, none of us have measured up to the glory of God. So that's the reason that Jesus had to suffer and die on the cruel cross. It's for you and it's for me. And if you felt bad about somebody getting a whipping in your place, Victor, Deacon Brown, we ought to really feel terrible about what Jesus died. 
the way that Jesus died, the way that he suffered, bled, and died. My dad beat me with the orange cord, but you know what? He never, it never brought blood. The Bible says that Jesus was whipped with leather straps that had bones in it, had nails in it, until his back was like hamburger. And then they wanted him to carry his own cross up the hill to Calvary. So this Lenten season, it's about taking time to reflect on why we all needed such a harsh method of redemption. And what's, what's very important is that Jesus did it because he loved us. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Lenten season, it's about the opening up of our hearts, opening up our hands in confession and submission and letting go of sin once again. So, We've already done some of it, but there's more to come. There's the not yet. It's the already, and it's the not yet. It's like having, you, you're, you're somewhere in between the already and the not yet. You see, we have the already. Most of us, anyway, have confessed that we are sinners that we are sinners and we were saved by grace. We came down the aisle. We gave the minister our hands. We confessed that we were sinners and that we believed that Jesus Christ died on Calvary and that he rose again on that third day for our sins. And because he died and rose again, we shall live again. We shall have eternal life. You see, we have the already, but in between there, there's a not yet. And yet, we have not pertained that perfection. So we're somewhere in between. We must confess our sins. What I love about Jesus Christ there's a song that says, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. And it's just as good today as it was 2,000 years ago because the blood will never lose its power. Yes. So when we fall to sin, we can go back and we can confess because we haven't gotten back to the not yet. We have not attained it yet. I know that sin is right around the corner. I might not be planning, but I know sin is right around the corner. I last few weeks have been kind of rough on me. I've had things to tear up on me. But you know what? God has been able to help me through it. People have disappointed me, but God has been with me and carried me through it. I know, though, that sin is right around the corner because some of those times whether it was my faults, whether it was my attitudes, whether it was my words, or whether it was my actions, I know that it was that not yet. 
And right then, I knew that I still had not attained it. But I'm so glad that I can go back to the already and confess my sins to Jesus Christ. And he is ready and he is willing to forgive. Because it says the wages of sin that not yet is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There will be a not yet moment. I know it. Philippians, the third chapter, 14th verse says, I hadn't, Paul says, I hadn't gotten there yet. And I haven't gotten there. But he says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God through Jesus Christ. So we must go from confession towards perfection. And we have not all gotten there. I don't know anybody here, I don't know anybody anywhere who have reached perfection. The only folks that I know who don't sin are dead folks. And I'm not dead yet. So pray for me because I haven't gotten there yet. Yet, I press, I try, I pushed for the high calling of Jesus Christ. And I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. I really don't know. I don't know what's right around the corner, but I do know one thing, that no matter what I do, no matter what I say, if I go to God and confess my sins, that the blood still works and is able to cleanse us from our sins. And I know that Jesus died one Friday evening hung him up on a cross, pierced him in his side, cursed him out. He wanted water, but they gave him vinegar. And he stayed there. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he stayed there. And he didn't stay. The nails didn't hold him because God could have come and taken him. But he stayed on the cross because he loved you and you and you and you and you and he loved me. So I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know what what the next year is going to bring. I don't know if I'm going to be here. But what I do know is who holds tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow, but I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from tomorrow's sunshine, for the skies might turn to gray. I don't worry about the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I walk beside him, for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I just don't understand. But I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Doors of the church are open. If there be one, if you need prayer, Why don't we just come down around the altar and we pray and we give for the Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, the symbol of the cross, the ashes that we use 
It's because of what was happening in the Bible. Many times, many times we sat or they sat in ashes because they mourned. And we mourn because of the sins that we've committed that caused Jesus to have to die such a cruel death. But we're thankful also that he did not come down, that he stayed with us, and he died for us. Amen? Our Father and our God, we are so thankful for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the great sacrifice that he made, that we might have a right to the tree of life, that we might have eternal life. Now, Lord, we come to you to say that we appreciate, we honor you. We know that you showed your love for us through your son, Jesus Christ. We also know that you showed your hatred for sin because you put all of that hatred for sin on your son, Jesus Christ, so that we could live. And as our deacon said this evening, that we could have life more abundant. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless these who are here and all those under my voice to bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. So, should we just come one by one? Or
Cretans for their wonderful message on this evening. Amen. It, uh, I thought about when, when, when Reverend Cheatham was saying that Christ, how Christ died for our sins. I know, I, rem I remember my, when I was a little boy, my daddy fussed me for not eating like I should eat and going outside half dressed and I caught the flu real bad and um, came down with a fever, a bad fever. And my daddy, and I know some of you parents have experienced it, and my daddy came down with a bad case of the flu just trying to treat me. You, you ever might experienced that? He came down with a bad case with fever and everything trying to help me. He came down because I was hard-headed. So we have to realize Christ paid a price for sins that we have committed. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, we're going to ask Deacon Corley to lead us with one last hymn of his choice, and then Minister Van Hoss is going to ask you to close us out with prayer. Okay? Of your choice. Oh, I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood. Long Jesus died upon the cross. No, it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood for me. They went out. Died upon the cross. No, it was the blood for me. Reverend Van der Hoy. Amen. Let us pray. Our kind and our merciful Father, it is again that we, your people, call upon your name again. And Lord, with that, we uh, have to tell you thank you. God, we thank you for giving us this chance, Lord God, at life and giving us a chance at life to where we have it more abundantly. And God, as we uh, embark upon this 40-day 40, 40 journey, Lord God, everything that we desire, Lord God, we pray that it would line up with your word. God, we ask that you would have your way and have thine own way in our lives. Lord God, with so much that's going on, I know we get distracted, but allow us to remember, Lord God, what you've done for us on Calvary and help us, Lord God, to make an ultimate sacrifice for you as we remember the things that you've done for us. God, what a memory, Lord God, that we have as we look back over the years and just remember the things that you've done for us. Lord God, we just have to tell you thank you. Amen. We thank you for sending your darling son, Jesus Christ, who paid the cost for our sins, Lord God, that we may have a right to the tree of life. And so, God, as we uh, humbly submit ourselves unto you and to this service, we pray that you would continue to bless each and every one of us in a special way. You know what we need. You know what our heart desires. And then please remember uh, your preach man on today that you would restore him back a hundredfold and give him back what he has poured out unto your people. God help us Lord God to not only love for one another but care for one another and I believe Lord God that's why you allowed your son Jesus Christ to die for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We ask these blessings in your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say amen. 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 I want to thank everybody for coming out on, on, on this evening. Amen. Okay. We do have if someone with uh, in, in that box there is the, the, the Lenten, the devotion. And sign your name. Okay.
Happy Valentine's Day to 